All right, guys, we are back. We have your cameras on. All right, let's see who we got. We got uh, Jackie, we have Nee, Brittany, Celine, Alondra, Romello. Romello, where are you? Oh, there you go. We got Elda, we have Chidera, Nidia, hi. We got Daniil, we got Riza, we have Lee, Chopin, Olga. Carlos, Vanessa, and Amy, where are you? All right, make sure your cameras are on, very important. Uh, Nidia, I sent you a message with the, for you to, to join the WhatsApp group, and I also sent you the book on the, on the Zoom chat, sent to you privately, to be able to reach. Um, Deline, this looks like you already got it, so we're good. All right, so this is the last chapter uh, for today. Um, and then tomorrow we'll go into chapter uh, four and five, okay? Some days we only even have one chapter. It all depends on, on the, uh, some chapters are more complicated than others. So it might take a little bit more time than others. Um, and it also depends on your participation. If you guys ask questions, uh, it's great. It helps the class uh, flow. Um, and if you don't ask questions, we'll leave early, but then it leaves a lot of um, things wondering, right? So make sure you take advantage of this and ask questions. All right. So interest and estates. Go back to this word. Let's start with this word. Everybody by now should know what this means, right? Let me know in the chat. What does it mean? Okay. There you go. Very good. Okay. Assets, right? Exactly. So something you own, assets. Very important. What about this word? Interests. Let me know what you think. Again. Don't Google it. Just give me your opinion. What do you think interest means? So there, don't send me anything private. Send to everyone. All right. So what does this mean? Interest. The word interest, guys. Hmm. Property. I thought a statement property. What does interest mean then? Then it says the amount you pay for the money borrowed. Okay. Oh, you're thinking about um, interest from interest rates uh, from financing. No, not 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 here in uh, when we're talking about rights to a property, uh, ownership, personal investment. Nope. The amount you make. Nope. Come on, everybody, participate. Let me know you're there. Benefit. Okay. Value. Okay. Profit. Questionable, but yes, to be. Anybody else? There's no wrong answers, okay? Over the next three weeks, at least, on the fourth week, there'll be wrong answers, All right? No excuses. <laughs> just kidding. But right now, there's no wrong answers. Just, just put whatever you think it might be, and I'll address it. Cost. Okay. Okay. 
There's still a few of you that have not answered. Give me anything. Right? Okay. Draws your attention. Ah, I interest you. <laughs> That's a nice way to see it, but not for this, but, but that was a good one. All right. Value the meal. All right, cool. So, ownership. Kinda. All right, so let's go here. Interest. So, estate means ownership or property, okay? While the word interest means rights. benefits or claims look estate means ownership means you you it's yours but if i rent from you right don't i have certain interests in the property because i have rights as a tenant i have the benefit of using the property and i can claim uh, uh my my time there as a tenant so they have rights and just uh, benefits or or claims a mortgage company does not hold an estate because they don't own the property but they have an interest in the property and with that interest if you don't pay they have the right to collect by foreclosing right so they'll file a claim and they benefit from any profit they might uh, from any money they might come from it does that make sense so while one word gives you ownership which is the uh, the estate interest is rights benefits or claims in somebody else's property okay so estate is your property uh interest is in somebody else's property now interests and estates in land first of all if it says in land we're talking about in real property So it could be land, it could be real property. I could have an interest or ownership of real property, right? The real estate, it could be um, an interest or a claim of real estate. So an interest as we talked about earlier, an interest in real estate is the ownership of any combination of bundle of rights of real property. And these rights include the right to possess, the right to use, transfer, encumber, or exclude. We went over this. You might have some, you might have all. If you have some, you don't own the property, like a tenant has some of these, but doesn't have all of these. Okay? An undivided interest is an owner's interest in a property which two or more parties share ownership. So if there's two of us owning the same property, we have an undivided interest. And why undivided or indivisible? Because if we own, let's say, uh, Chidera, we own a two-family house, me and you, okay? If we split, right, do I get the first floor and you get the second? Or do you get the second and I get, the, or, or vice versa? What, what, how are we doing this? It's indivisible. So it's Im almost impossible for us to split the property into two you understand if it's a three family how would we do this you get an apartment and a half and i get an apartment and a half so it's difficult to determine which uh ass is yours and which which one is mine so we might be forced to do what's called a judicial partition which is selling the property and splitting the monies you got it so undivided interest means we own it as a whole and then um, we, if, if we sell, then we'll, um, we'll, we'll get whatever our percentage is based on um, our shares. So examples of interests include an, owners, an owner who enjoys complete bundle of rights, a tenant who temporarily enjoys the right to use, a lender who enjoys the right to encumber. So we talked about all these things already. These are certain types of interest that people can have in a property. Uh, somebody repairs something, but you did not you did not pay them. So the roof, somebody did the roof, and you did not pay them. Well, they can put a lawsuit against you and encumber your property with that. Okay, so on. 
Uh, the interest defer according to how long a, a person may enjoy the interest, what portion of the land, air, or subsurface the interest applies to, uh, whether the interest is public or private, and whether the interest includes legal ownership of the property. So interest in real estate, if you have possession, if you have possession, then it's an estate, it's yours, it's an asset, right? Non-possession, it's an encumbrance, it's against the property, but there's no title to the property or public interest. Like when you, when you get taxed or, or something that's maintained by municipality, like water um, uh, or sewer mains, they have a public interest in your property. Now, interests are principally distinguished by whether they include possession. If the interest holder enjoys the right of possession, the party is considered to have an estate in land or familiar, familiar in the state. If a private interest holder does not have the right to possess, then the interest is an encumbrance. Like I said, the uh, a mortgage, for instance. An encumbrance, let's go to this word because I keep on repeating it. The word encumbrance is a cloud. Why is it a cloud? Okay. If you guys... Like the winter is coming, right? I don't, I, I don't think we're gonna have autumn. It's gonna go straight to winter the way it's going, right? Um, we went from um, 80 degrees to like 50 degrees. It's amazing. So, how do you guys feel? Let, let me know how you guys feel um, in the um, with this difference. Do you feel better? Do you feel worse with with the change of weather? How do you feel? Let me know. And Vanessa, what do you want me to repeat? I'm sorry. Guys, let me know in the chat. How do you feel with this? Do you, do you feel better or do you feel worse with this change of weather? Better. Okay. You like it? Okay. Eh. <laughs> worse. Worse. Okay. Wow, we got like 50 50 here. So, uh, some of you like the the winter apparently Deline says love the change of weather okay sure <laughs> i love summertime just saying you know not that i get to go to the to the beach much as you can tell but i love summertime <laughs> so it's a 50 50. What about when it starts raining, when it starts uh, snowing? How do you feel when that happens? And, and I'll explain better in a second, but for now, just give me your opinion. How do you feel? We're in the middle of winter right now, let's say, middle of winter. How do you feel when compared to spring or summer? Alan says, sleepy, all right. I'm just trying to get to, to a point, so let's see. Worse, worst of them all, worse, okay. Me too, I agree, 100%. Don't mind the rain, but don't want to clean up the snow. All right, we're getting somewhere. I don't like when... All right, so now we all have something in common. There might be one or two people here that'll say, Hey, I love winter. Yeah, I love watching the snow fall. But yeah, I hate having to clean up the snow, all right? So uh, I like the sound of rain. Amy, yeah, absolutely. During spring, it's amazing because now you have good weather and the rain is soothing. In wintertime, you hear the rain. It's like I cannot even go outside no matter what because it's super cold, all right? So me personally, I don't like the winter here in, in Jersey. Um, I love winter in other places. I, I like the four seasons um separately uh here in jersey we seem to have all four seasons in one day uh, and that's the only thing i don't like about uh probably one of the only things i don't like about jersey but why what, what's what's the point where i'm trying to get at you guys feel worse you don't like to do this you don't like to do that it kind of like the clouds right the clouds that rain and all that stuff stop you from doing the same activities that you could do freely during summertime 
right? You cannot go outside with, with, with the kids or with your friends and just do whatever you want. You're limited by the weather. There's a limitation. Are you guys understanding what I'm trying to say here? You're being limited. A cloud, so when it comes to these uh, autumn and, and, and winter, it starts limiting what you can do. In fact, it limits you so much that even your clothing has to change, right? Your clothing has to change. Now you have to get more stuff on in order to be comfortable. So an encumbrance, an encumbrance, when we're talking about the word encumbrance, it's a cloud. It attaches to your property, right? And limits what you can do with the property. Okay? And this is an actual term, cloud of titles. That means there's something that restricts the owner's bundle of rights. Tax liens, mortgages, easements, and encroachments, these are things that attach to your property and limit the value, the usability, and the sellability of that property. So it clouds your property. It encumbers your property. So every time you see the word encumbrance, think of winter. Think of cloud. Think of limitation. Okay? Can you sell your property without paying off the mortgage first? Let me know. Can you sell the property? Without paying off the mortgage first. Let me know in the chat. Olga says yes. Chopin says yes. Some say no. Okay. So the answer to this is depends. Some people are willing to buy the property with the mortgage. Okay. So some people are. But the majority of the transactions, we get to the closing date and we have to pay off what was before in order to start one new. Okay, so most of them have to be resolved right away. You guys understand? So it's encumbered. Not every transaction will be sold with the mortgage and dealing with it. Okay. All right, next. Now, public entities may um, own or lease real estate, in which case they enjoy an estate and land. However, government entities also have non-possessory uh, interests in real estate, which act to control land for the public good within the entity's jurisdiction. Now, the prime example of public interest is police power, okay? Or the right of a local government, or county or government, uh, to zone. So, what is police power? Okay, we're going to repeat this uh, again later on. Um, uh, we're going to repeat this later on. The police power. Um, Police simply means rules and regulations. And it's important to have this distinction of what the word really means because a lot of people say, oh, here comes the, the police or there's the police. No, there's a police officer. So somebody that enforces the rules and regulations. Okay. Um, if it's a, a, an inspector for the city, they are policing as well. They're enforcing the rules and regulations set by the, the municipality, like in building codes, for instance. All right. So police is a set of rules that the state created, trickle down to counties and municipalities, and they impose on you. And then somebody is responsible for enforcing those rules and regulations, whether an inspector or a police officer okay so that's that's pretty much uh, what it is so what the government has they have the police power so that's the right to create these rules as long as they benefit uh, the public so it's for of public interest okay? another example of public interest is the right to acquire ownership through the power of eminent domain we'll talk about it better later but eminent domain is the government takes your property gives you some money and you walk away why would they take your property they have the right to take your property 
because for instance they're building a new school or um the train station is expanding or the town needs needs that space for expansion as long as it benefits again the general public right the community they have the right to do so so they take your property in exchange for a fair compensation okay we already talked about this now estates and land and we are on page 31 On page 31, the states and land, very, very important. There's two different types of estates or ownership or interest in land. There's the freehold estate, and then there's the leasehold estate. Okay? If it's freehold estate, guys, you need to know the difference between these. And we have chapter just for uh, leaseholds. Uh, so for, for landlord, tenant, leases, and all that stuff. But freehold estate is, as the name says, it's free of any holds, meaning you can do whatever you want with your property. It's yours. You have title to it. Okay? So you have title. Okay? You have ownership. Freehold. You have title. You have ownership. Okay? As far as leasehold, as the name says, it's temporary. Temporary rights. So there's tenants involved. Okay? So every time you see the word leasehold, it involves tenants and they're there for a certain amount of time. It's temporary. Okay? It could be on a month to month basis, it could be on a one year lease but eventually ends because they do not own. Can, can the tenant sell the property? No. Do you understand? They don't have full rights. They don't have the full bundle of rights. They're limited on the bundle of rights. So freehold, I have ownership, title to the property. Leasehold, I'm a tenant and I have temporary access or possession of the property. Okay. Let me know if you guys are good. Thumbs up. Good so far? Okay. I'll try to make it as easy as possible for you guys, okay? If you don't understand something, just let me know. Now, in a freehold estate, again, highlighted as a, as a, I did it right up there. So freehold, leasehold. In a freehold estate, the duration of the owner's rights cannot be determined. The rights may endure for a lifetime or uh, uh, forever, for less than a lifetime or generations beyond the owner's lifetime. A leasehold estate is distinguished by its specific duration represented by a lease term. Okay. Uh, something to remember because this will be very confusing later on. Something to remember is that both leasehold and freehold estates are referred to as tenancies. The owner of a freehold estate is known as a freehold tenant. The, own, the renter or uh, lessee is known as a leasehold tenant. So tenant means who occupies the property. Okay. So even though I rent to somebody and that somebody is... Uh, the leasehold tenant I'm still the freehold tenant I'm still the one that has a physical possession uh, or full bundle of rights possession to the property okay a tenant is temporarily there so we are used to saying tenant when referring to leases right that's what we're used to just know that in the next few chapters we're going to talk about freehold tenants and you can own your property as a tenancy in severalty, so occupancy by yourself, occupancy, possession, and use by yourself. You can own the property as tenants in common. That means there's two or more people involved, but they're tenants or occupants or right to possess the property and, and so on. So there's different types of tenancies. The word tenant simply denotes the possession and use of the property. 
So I'm just making this clear because in real life, like I said, when we say tenants, oh, you're renting. Not always. Okay. All right, where it says freehold estates. Freehold estates determine, uh, differ primarily according to the duration of the estate and what happens to the estate when the owner dies. A freehold estate of uh, potentially unlimited duration is a fee simple estate. An estate limited to the life uh, of the owner is called a life estate. So let's go over these uh, freehold estates. What does the word freehold mean again, guys? Let me know in the chat. What does the word freehold mean? This one, freehold. The word freehold, what does it mean, guys? Ownership, great, great, great. Have title, perfect, freehold. Okay, so within these types of ownership, within these titles, it breaks down even further. There's fee simple estates and there's life estates. Within fee simple estates, there's fee simple with all, it's yours 100%. And then there's others where it's yours 100%, but you might lose it. I'll explain in a second. The life estate is based on somebody's life. So you know you're going to lose it no matter what. So remember, fee simple, it's simple. It's yours. Okay? Fee simple, fee simple, absolute mean the same it's yours okay so let's go right here fee simple because again it's absolute fee simple or absolute it's the highest form of ownership interest that you can acquire in real estate again property is yours no matter what Fee simple it's simple You have fee simple absolute, as I was saying, and you have defeasible, meaning you could lose it. You can be defeated. Okay, every time you see the word defeasible, think defeat. You could be defeated, meaning somebody can win the property over. How? Depending. You could be determinable. Sorry. Right. It could be determinable or condition subsequent. If it's a fee simple absolute, as I was saying, then the fee simple absolute estate is perpetual estate that is not conditioned by stipulated uh, or restricted uses. It may also be freely passed on to the heirs. For these reasons, fee simple absolute estate is the most desirable estate that can be obtained in residential real estate. So you own it. And you don't want somebody else to control it. Makes sense, right? Nobody wants somebody to control my property, right? You don't want that. It's yours. Okay? But that's where fee simple, the feasible comes in. The defeasible fee estate is perpetual provided usage conforms to stated conditions. So you can keep it forever as long as these things don't fail. For instance, the property must be used for a certain purpose or under certain conditions. If the use changes or if prohibited conditions are present, then the estate reverts to the previous grantor of the estate. My example usually here is very simple. Look at me for a second. I have a phone in my hand. And I'm going to gift this phone or sell this phone to my son. Okay, my oldest son is 14. So I'm going to say, Pedro, here's a phone. But there's a condition with this phone. The condition is your grades have to, to maintain or get better. If your grades drop, you lose your phone. All right? So while my son has the phone, it's his phone no matter what. Are you guys understanding this? So while he has it, it's his. So he's responsible for maintaining it. He would be responsible for paying the bill. He will be responsible for everything that's related to the phone because it's his. The problem is, 
if his grades drop, what was the condition? Grades dropping, you lose it. So if his grades drop, the phone comes back to me. So I gift it. He's the, the full owner of it. But if he fails at that one condition, it comes back to me. So in terms of real estate, it's the same thing. I can sell it to you, Elda. I'll, I'll, I'll sell it to you, right? As long as you keep the property, um, as um, uh, the example I had in the previous book was as a wildlife preservation. That means you cannot, you cannot build anything on it. You have to maintain it as wildlife. Okay, so there's land I sold to you. Maintain it as wildlife. The moment you put a building on it, is the building wildlife? No, you're destroying our original condition. So like I said, Elda, the property is yours as long as. But the moment you changed it, it reverts back to me. Are you guys good with this so far? Simple so far? Great. Now, there's another thing we can do, and we'll, we'll talk about it in a second, but another thing that we can do is, going back to my son, I gave him the phone, and I told him, well, Pedro, here's the thing, if, if your grades drop, not only do you lose your phone, it goes to somebody else, it doesn't come back to me, it goes to somebody else. Now, I don't know if you guys have siblings or not, but... The worst thing you can do, I found this over the years, the worst thing you can do is take from one and give to the other, right? Did you ever go through this or know somebody that went through this, right? It's the worst thing, right? Like, how come you giving it to her or to him or whatever? So, Pedro, here's the thing. If your grades drop, this phone goes to your sister, Kayleen. You see what I'm saying? So it's either he's going to keep up his grades or get better or if he loses it goes to the sister now in real estate the same thing can happen i can say <coughs> i'm sorry i can say elda i'm selling the property to you as long as you keep it as wildlife preserve for instance or preservation if you screw up if you change uh the conditions of this sale the property is yours granted okay but if you change the conditions of this sale, instead of the property coming back to me, it goes to Olga. Okay? So Olga receives the property if you fail. Are you guys understanding this? this Olga, in this scenario, is going to be called the remainderman. Okay? And we're going to get right here. The remainderman. Olga is the remainderman. So there's two parties to a transaction. There's a seller and there's a buyer. Two parties. A third party, see, Olga was not part of my transaction with Elda, correct? I should, I should have picked different names to be easier. So, uh, Elda, I sell to you. I'm the seller. You're the buyer. We're the first parties. Olga is a third party. She's not related to the transaction at all. I just said she gets the property if you screw up. Are you guys with me so far? Okay. So... Olga is the remainderman, and there's no remainder woman, remainder corporation, remainder, no, it's a remainderman. That's what it's called, it's just a term. It's a third party that receives the property if somebody <clears throat> alters or, um, or changes the, the, the condition of the contract, okay? Going back up real quick. You have life estates. In life estate, the same thing could happen, guys. It, it is a fee determinable. It's the same thing. It's a fee determinable. But the condition is somebody's life. What does that mean? When I sold to Elda, I said, Elda, as long as you keep it as wildlife preservation, right? The property is yours. Here we're saying, uh, let's see. Uh, Romello. I'm going to sell the property to you as long as you're alive. So there's still that condition there, as long as. It's still a condition. The difference is, it's a specific condition. Somebody's life. So as long as Romello's alive, right? As long as Romello's alive, the property is his. Meaning, 
He can sell it. He can gift it. He can mortgage. He can encumber. You can do whatever he wants. It's his property. He enjoys the same, same rights as being a regular owner. The only thing that he cannot do is put it in the will to his heirs. Okay? Because when Romello dies, knock on wood, but when Romello dies, the property reverts back to me. Or if I name a, a third party, Fallon, for instance, right? If Romello dies, the property goes to Fallon, the remainder of it. Are you guys understanding this? It's exactly the same as a fee determinable, it's just that the condition is somebody's life. And once that person dies, it reverts to the previous owner. So in fee determinable and in life estate, can the owner sell? Can Elda and Romello sell the properties that I, that, I, that I sold to him with conditions? Can they sell? The answer is yes. They can sell it. They can do whatever they want. They have the same rights. They have full ownership. The thing is, if Elda fails, it reverts to me or goes to a third party that I named. If Romello dies, it reverts to me or it goes to a third party. So it doesn't matter who owns it at this point, right? So let's say Romello sold to Brittany, okay? And Brittany enjoys a property for five years and then Romello dies. Again, knock on wood. The property belongs to who when Romello dies? To me. So even though Romello sold it to Brittany, the condition was as long as the, 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 the person is alive. Romello dies, Brittany loses the interest in the property. All right. In the same, the same token, if Elda sells the property to Chopin, for instance, and Chopin then uh, builds something on the land, guess what? My original condition stays. So Chopin, you just bought it from Elda, but you should have read. It's going to be on the deed, guys. All these restrictions are going to be part of the deed. So when you buy a property, it comes right there. Restrictive covenants. You can or cannot do this with the property. So the moment Chopin changes it, guess what? It reverts back to me, even though she bought it from Elda. Are you guys good with this? Okay, if you have any questions, drop it so I can address it. Okay. All right, so there's, uh, if there's no questions, moving forward. So there's two terms, like I said, remainderman is a third party. Okay. So remainder is a third party. And reversion is when it reverts to the original owner. So reversionary interest or reversion is I sold to you, you altered the conditions and it reverts back to me. That's a reversion. Remainder is it goes to a third party. All right. Now, the two types of life estate. So in somebody's life, there's the conventional and there's the legal life estate. And under life estates, that means it's based on somebody's life. Conventional means I appoint it. So when I sold to Romello with a condition that was based on his life, that's a conventional life estate. A legal life estate is husband and wife so when the wife dies the property comes to me right when the husband dies the property goes to her so it's called uh, uh homestead or dower and courtesy and then there's uh elective shares but usually between husband and wife you guys got it so conventional is when i'm selling to you and i put the condition legal means hey it's it's automatic is what we knew it was going to be husband and wife okay 
And then there's this one, there's the ordinary. I know it's a lot of stuff to remember, day one, but I'll repeat this a bunch of times tomorrow and the following day and the one after that. So conventionally there's ordinary and there's pour autre vie, which simply means for another's life. So Romello, I sold the property to you as long as Daniil is alive. So wait a minute. Somebody else's life? Yeah. When Daniil dies, when she dies, Romello, the property reverts back to me. So this will happen mainly, for instance, uh, let's say I got married to somebody that has a, uh, already has a kid. All right? Not my kid. Already has a kid. And, and guys, I'm not like this. I, just for the example. And I'll tell the kid, for instance, hey, um, let, let's say it's, uh, it's Romello and I'm married to Daniil. I said, Romello, hey, here's the thing. This particular property is yours as long as your mother is alive. As soon as Daniil dies, property comes back to me. You see what I'm saying? So these are the type of scenarios. Property is yours. Hey, I'm helping you out. I'm married to your mom. This is what it is. I'm trying to help you. But once she dies, we cut ties. Like it's no, more, no longer me and you. I, I mean, things might change later on, but I really don't know you like that right now. So yeah. Uh, if she's no longer around, you're no longer around. All right, so it could be these type of uh, of scenarios. All right, guys. <laughs> Next, uh, so I just talked about conventional life estate. I just talked about this. Okay, this is just a summary, guys. I'm moving forward because I already talked about all this. Puerto somebody else's homestead. All right, dower and courtesy. So we're on page. We're on page 36. Dower and courtesy. So the words dower and courtesy. So dower and courtesy is the right that the wife or the husband has on the other side of the property upon the spouse's death. So dower right here means that if the husband dies, the wife gets the 50% share that the husband had. Because remember, in some states, uh, others have abolished this, like New Jersey no longer has this, but in some states... Husband and wife own everything 50-50 no matter what. Okay? Unless you have like a, a prenup or something like that. So in, um, in a dower uh, or courtesy, if husband dies, his 50% is automatically transferred to the wife, the surviving spouse. Courtesy is if the wife dies, the husband gets the 50%. You guys got it? So dower and courtesy is a legal life estate where if one dies the other one acquires that share automatically so we're 50 50 carlos again how's it possible i don't know what you do carlos but you're always interrupting this class man well again All right, so um, did you guys understand dower and courtesy here? We're good? Carlos says, I had another phone call. Yeah, but I don't know why. See, that's, that's the thing about Zoom. Unfortunately, Zoom is still the best thing um, for these classes. But there's a lot, of, a lot of stuff that's missing. And these little little... Things that that popping in. I had somebody in my first classes. I had somebody jumping into my class, meaning uh, they're from a totally different class. They're they're watching the class and they're like, "Oh, where's Mr. Henderson or or whatever it was?" So I'm like, uh, "There's no Mr. Anderson here." Well, what what class is this then? You see what I'm saying? So 
it's these little, little quirks that um, that Zoom has that I'm not too too happy with. But anyway, all right, next. Uh, we talked about all this. Uh, leasehold estates. It's when we're talking about tenants, as we said that before already. So leasehold estates, there's a tenant, and we're talking about renters, tenant renters, okay? And under leasehold estates, there's different types of uh, um, tenant, the type of leases, I'm sorry. There's the, the lease for years, the month to month or year to year or week to week, whatever. There's an estate at will, so indeterminate length or at sufferance, meaning I don't want you there. So let's start with a state for years, which is the most complicated one. Ready? The most complicated one is a state for years because when we see a state for years, we think automatically a long period of time, right? It's a state for years. So it should last more than one year at least, right? But no, an estate for years is for a definite period of time. So if there's a definite period of time, there's something called a check in, check out. Okay, in an estate for years, take note because this is the most complicated one. In an estate for years, there must be a check-in, check-out. It's a definite period of time. So if I have a one-year lease, it's an estate for years. If I have a six-month lease, it's an estate for years. If I have a one-week lease, it's an estate for years. The key feature here is the check-in, check-out. So let's say you go to an Airbnb or you go to a resort, to a hotel, whatever. You already determined that you're going to check in on Friday and you're going to leave on Sunday, as an example. Okay? The fact that there's a check-in, there's a check-out, that's it. It's in the state for years. Okay? You said you're coming in on Friday at 9 and you're going to leave on, on Sunday at 11 or 12, whatever it's stipulated. The lease agreement is for those two and a half days or three days. You guys got it? So check-in, check-out. This is, again, the most complicated one that you guys are going to find a state for years is a definite period of time one thing to remember is at the end of the term the estate automatically terminates without any requirement of notice so think about this going back to the resort the airbnb or whatever um when you when it comes to sunday at 11 o'clock Let's say that's your checkout time or 12 o'clock, whatever. It's your checkout time, right? Does, does the hotel have to call you and say, hey, don't forget that by 12 o'clock you have to be out? Do they have to? No, they don't have to. Because you said you were going to leave at 11 o'clock on Sunday. You said it. We could renew it if we come to an agreement, but you said you were going to leave. So it automatically ends on the date that we determined. If it's a one-year lease, then it starts on, uh, today is 921. So it starts today on 921, and it ends a year from now on 920 at the end of the day. So that means whatever one-year lease you guys signed today, okay, a year from now, if you don't renew, if you don't call me and say, hey, Bruno, I would like to stay a little bit longer. If you don't call me, then automatically ends on September 20th of 2021. You guys with me on this? Good? All right. So a state for years, there's a definite beginning date and a definite ending date. The next one is uh, that everybody commonly knows is the month to month or the week to week or so, right? It's called a from period to period or periodic tendency. It automatically renews. There's no ending. It automatically renews. If we said month to month, hey, as long as you pay and as long as I allow you, 
keep on staying. There's no limitation. Okay? That's, that's the, the simplest one uh, that you can think of. The uh, estate at will, if it's an estate at will, sorry. If it's an estate at will, it's indeterminate length. What does that mean? It means that there is no renewal cycle again. There's no definite expiration date. So similar to the month to month. Just never ends. It could be, it could be verbal. Okay? So it never ends. At sufferance. Oh, by the way, at will because I allow you to stay there. At sufferance, you're there without consent. At sufferance is without consent. So let's think about it this way. Um, you're at the hotel. You're supposed to leave at 12 o'clock. And it's 1 o'clock and you're still there. The maids are knocking on the door. They want to go in, get the, the room ready for the next people that are coming in. Okay? If you're there without my authorization, because you're supposed to leave at 12, right? And I need you to leave. You're without my consent, without my authorization. Then as a landlord, I'm suffering. So a state that sufferance means you're there without consent. I need you to go. So the lease expired and you're still there. You violated provisions of the lease like uh, disorderly conduct, destroying the premises, right? Whatever it might be, there's different reasons. We'll talk about it at a different time, but there's different reasons for eviction. So if you don't pay, if you overstay, or if you violate any of the other provisions of the lease and you refuse to, to leave, then you are a tenant at sufferance. I don't want you there. I have to evict you. Okay, guys? Those are the simple ones for... Um, for um uh, for leases and we'll we'll have we'll have way more uh coming up okay so guys today wow 120 not bad you want to start another chapter anybody one more just one more <laughs> all right now uh we're done for today guys uh tomorrow we're going to talk about ownership uh make sure guys because it's the morning class Evening class is already tough, but morning class. This will be a, a tough chapter to, to grasp in certain, uh, certain things here. So make sure tomorrow you're full of energy. Make sure you get your coffee, your tea, whatever it is that you need to get you pumped. But make sure you're paying attention. Um, by the way, let me explain again. Cameras must be on at all times and on your face. All right, Daniil, I don't see you. Brittany, I don't see you. So it's very important, and Daniil as well. So it's very important that it's on your face, okay? If it's not recording your face, we have a problem, okay? So, well, now it's okay, it's done. But for tomorrow, make sure we have everything on point so we can go right into the, the subject, okay? Um, there's no homework per se, okay, before I end. There's no homework per se. But definitely go into Quizlets, uh, guys. Uh, go search the chapters we just went over. Try yourself, see? where you are with the terms and, and all that, okay? So go to the student portal. If you cannot access the student portal, send me a message on WhatsApp and I'll help you um, get there, okay? Very, very important. Uh, if you have any questions in general regarding the class, regarding the, the school, regarding uh, real estate, whatever it might be, send me a message separately on uh, WhatsApp. Not in the group chat, send it to me directly. If it's a question regarding um let's say you're doing the the quizlets or you're doing the practice exam which uh i'm not not the practice exam if you guys go to the book there's um chapter tests they are on page 485 and you can test yourself if you have any questions you can take a screenshot of this put in the in the uh in a WhatsApp group, and one of the students will help you out. I will help you out, but, but I have a really good group uh, going on in WhatsApp, and students help each other out, which is amazing. I love it. Uh, some students already passed, they're already licensed, and they're still in the group helping. All right, so I really love that, and I like to create that culture. 
If you have questions, uh, drop it there. Let's help each other out and um, succeed. All right? Guys, I hope you enjoyed your first day. Uh, again, uh, my name is Bruno, 908-418-8325. If any questions, just let me know. All right? Enjoy the rest of your day. See you tomorrow.